Welcome back to our amazing show, Sister Circle Life. Mm -hmm. Our next guest is known for his no-holds-barred journalistic style and has interviewed some of the most iconic figures in black America and America. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And the man knows how to hang a suit. Please <laughs> welcome to the circle one of our favorite journalists, the very distinguished and accomplished Ed Gordon. Wow! Such a pleasure to meet How you, sir. Are you? This is your spot right oh, here. My, my God. Mean. My God, my God. Oh, man. Let me just tell you, yes, you came away from around the yes, bam, you had so much class with you. Well, that's, that's, yeah. I mean, you're such a classy man. You really are. Okay. All right. Man. You really are. You I'm really are. I'm not hanging out to, to any of that. Right. To what? any of that. You but really I appreciate are. it. You I really appreciate are. It. Absolutely. I, appreciate well, it. I, I gotta tell you, you grew up in Detroit, Michigan, yes, right? Mm -hmm. Straight out, Straight, Straight out of Detroit. Straight out of Detroit. They, they say what they do over there. It's cold what, in the D. It's cold what it do in the D. <laughs> but you grew up in Detroit. Did you ever know that journalism would be your calling? No, I thought I was going to be a lawyer at first. Well, first I thought I was going to be Bruce Lee or Julius Irving. You know, when minute. I was little. Wait a minute. When you little, you aspire yeah. to be. Right. But uh, I thought I was going to be a lawyer. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but I always liked people on TV. Mm -hmm. Always followed the news. Um, but... This fell into my lap. I had taken the LSAT, thought I was going to go, go to law school. And yeah. one of my professors said, you know what? You might be good at this. You should give it a shot. Mm -hmm. So I graduated from college, didn't have a job, was hanging out with my boy throwing a baseball in front of his mama's house. And yeah. we realized we had been doing that for months. Oh, wow. And I said, you know what? This is not working. Yeah. Right. So I volunteered at the PBS uh, affiliate in Detroit and have been going since then. Ever since wow. then. Yeah. Wow. Definitely a calling on your life. Let's talk about your early life. You lost your father mm -hmm. at a very young age, mm -hmm. and so you were raised by a single mother. How did losing him so early change the trajectory of your life? I think if you lose a parent early, you realize life isn't fair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, mm -hmm. you realize all the fairy tale stuff you tell kids um, isn't necessarily true all the time. Right. Uh, but I had a great mother. I had great role models. A gentleman down the street, two houses away, is still a mentor of mine. Oh, wow. Any big decision I have, I still call him. I'm almost wow. 60 years old. I'm 57. What? And I, yeah, yeah, <laughs> all of. Uh, but all if I've got a big decision, I'm still calling him. Yes. And so I've tried to do that with the people that I mentor to, to kind of stay in their life and make sure you yeah. know what's going mm -hmm. on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'll tell you, over your uh, course of your career, and you're still going, like you said, you've had some memorable um, interviews. I mean, Nelson Mandela, mm -hmm. the Obamas, uh, Whitney Houston. What do you do to prepare to go into one of those interviews? You know, I just really think about what people want to know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people are afraid to ask questions, and I've always said to people who say, well, you know, we don't want you to ask this or that. I, I tell the uh, PR folks, I'm going to ask it. Your client can either answer it or not, but mm -hmm. I'm going to ask it. Um, the biggest one in terms of, you know, debating back and forth, of course, was O.J. Simpson. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but I think all you owe that person is to be honest and true. Yes. Uh, and, you know, it's on them to decide what they want to answer or mm -hmm. how they want to answer. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, and I've been very blessed through the years to talk to just about everybody. Yeah. And yeah. O.J. is probably the most famous, but the one I'm asked about more often, literally to this day, is Tupac. Yeah, really? Really? Yeah. What was that like? interviewing Tupac? You know, I got to know him a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, he was, uh, we use the word genius too much, I think, mm -hmm. but he really was I that. I think so too. Um, and he, he knew he had been misguided in the sense of not having enough male influence in his life. Mm -hmm. So he asked when we were done for my phone number and he would call me periodically. Wow. And, uh, you know, unfortunately I talked to him literally a week before his death. Wow. And I saw he and Suge uh, a, a couple of days or a couple of weeks before at the Soul Train Awards, and mm -hmm. they were acting up. And I pulled him aside and I said, dude, yeah. you are not a gangster. Mm -hmm. Now, this Negro you're hanging with right. is a gangster. Right. Right. And you need to be careful. And I know, Ed, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a couple of weeks later, he's then gone. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. Really quickly, if you can give me the one-minute answer to this. Uh, lots of uh, social media and blogs. Had, had, do you feel like that has... <laughs> Tainted, tainted journalism no, and the I'm respect not, you know for what? the I'm field. not that old dude that says you should have done it this way and that. Right, it right. has changed journalism, yes. though. And there are people who call themselves journalists who are not. Mm. Right. You need to be trained to be a journalist. Now, I ain't hating on you if you're a blogger or a talk show host, mm -hmm. or, but you're mm -hmm. not a journalist. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest That's about right. that. Right. That would be like if I went to, you know, um, a medical supply store and got a stethoscope and started calling myself a doctor because I put it on your chest. Oh, mm. my, my, that doesn't my. make me... 
a journalist. It does a journalist. Make you, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's just different. Yeah. You know, life is different. Mm -hmm. Social media has changed life for all of us. Yes. Uh, and, and journalism has changed because of it. Yeah, yeah. Or reporting. Right. When we return, we're going to hear about his series, Am I Black Enough? Ooh, that is next. Black Enough. With the legendary Ed Gordon. Uh, yes. Stay with us. Just because you see a kid whose pants are off his... He got a gold chain on and an oversized T-shirt, and he's not conjugating, doesn't mean he's not intelligent. You know, but... And it doesn't mean he's a thug, and it doesn't mean that if you turn your back on him, he's going to rob you. Ooh, wow. wow, so true. We're back on Sister Circle Live with journalist Ed Gordon, and I just got to say, am I black enough? Mm. Yeah, we wanted to tackle the, the question, because that's something that still sticks in our community. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to find out what black people felt, mm -hmm. not how other people see us. So Correct. we really dive into... <laughs> What makes you black enough? That whole, can I have my black card back? Yeah. Thing. Yes. So we talked to a lot of celebrities and uh, some, some professors about how we still grapple with this. And it's not just the light, dark issue. Mm -hmm. It's really everything. Yeah. Are you educated enough? Uh, you know, it goes into what Sam did about stereotypes. Mm -hmm. And we've got a little bit of everybody from Misty Copeland to Wayne Brady, who has, oh, who wow. has yes. really, really struggled with this yes. in terms yeah. of how people saw him. Yes, I know it's so yeah. true. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's really goodness. interesting. Oh, gosh. Okay, we, I wish we had more time to ask to talk about and that. And I should note that if, if people want to see it, because it aired on Bounce, but you can go to the Brown Sugar app. Oh, yeah, we got you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You, I have two daughters. You have a daughter who's mm -hmm. 24. Uh, what has she taught you about yourself as a man? You know what? I, I, um, I want to be the person that Taylor envisions. Gorgeous. And so I really struggle to make sure that I don't disappoint her. Mm -hmm. And I have at times just because I'm daddy. Yeah. But I, you know, I tell her, you'll get over it. You're going to need some money. You'll be back. <laughs> uh, but I'm doing this for you. And I, I just want to be the person where at the end of the day, you know, when I'm, when I'm gone, mm -hmm. she'll say, that was my man. Yeah, wow, that's awesome. Yeah. 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 That Absolutely. means so much. And so many young women need their fathers. Mm -hmm. I mean, they really craft all who you are too. in terms of all of us. Mm -hmm. They really craft who we are in terms of our self-esteem. That's the first man we fall in love with. I yes. also think, with all due respect to women, that, mm -hmm. that men give a certain sense of self-reliance to little girls. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and yes. they, they do want to please daddy. Right, yes. right. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. As I'm he said, you. you can see the series Am I Black Enough on brownsugar.com. And the conversations always continues at SisterCircleTV.com. And legendary Ed Gordon. Thank you.